All right. So I asked if you guys have read some of the books. It looks like some of us have. Molly has not. Did Logan say he hasn't? Logan hasn't. I've read this book, and then I've read one more other book of Jeff Kenny's. But if you're after we finish this book, if it's something that you really like, I have a ton of his books in my classroom, and I'm looking on getting some more. So if you do like this book, you can always try, or you can always come to my room, and I can get you another one. So today we are going to start reading. This is already starting to record, so it is going to be posted in case something happens and you get kicked off or something like that. So this is the long haul. In case you didn't know, it is 5.4 level, um, book level, um, and it is three or three points. So at the end of this book, all of you will take the AR test, and um, yeah, so... I'm just gonna read the back to us real quick so we get a little heads up on what's happening. So, a family road trip is supposed to be a lot of fun. Have any of you guys ever been on a family road trip? Type it in my chat, yes or no. Have you been on a family road trip? Isaac has, Hannah has. Most of us have probably been somewhere, even if it's not that far, even if it's just to Chicago or just to Fort Wayne, something like that. Most of us have gone on some type of family road trip. Unless, of course, you're the Hefleys. The journey starts off full of promises, then quickly takes several wrong turns. Gas station bathrooms, crazy seagulls, a fender bender, a runaway pig. Not exactly Greg Hefley's idea of a good time. But even the worst road trip can turn into an adventure. And this is one the Hefleys won't forget. So that kind of leads us off. It tells us there's going to be some issues. There's going to be an issue with a gas station bathroom, with a seagull, with a pig. So we definitely know there's going to be some problems. So I'm going to start us off on reading. I need you on page. I don't know, but it says June. We're starting in June. Friday. If there's one thing I've learned from my years of being a kid, it's that you have zero control over your own life. Do any of you feel like that being a kid? Well, you know, not that you guys are like infants or anything, but you guys are only in fifth grade. Do you ever feel like you don't have control over your own life? Tell me in the chat. Or do you feel like you're the boss of everything? Tell me, how do you feel? You feel like you sometimes don't have control? Because think, if mom says we're going to the grocery store, sometimes you just have to go whether you want to or not, you know, or mom says it's dad says it's time to do homework. Guess what? It's time to do it. So I know sometimes as a kid, you kind of just have to do what you're told or what all is happening. Ever since school let out, I haven't had anything I needed to do or anywhere I've needed to be. As long as the air conditioner was working and the TV remote had batteries in it, I was all set for relaxing, for a relaxing summer vacation. All right, so Mr. Greggs, he's ready for a chillin' summer. He just wants the air conditioner and the TV remote. Mrs. Kneifel's kind of like that sometimes. Not necessarily during summer break, but sometimes I just want to be sitting in front of the TV. But then, out of the blue, this happens. Heck your bags, we're going on a road trip. And who said that? Who said pack your bags, we're going on a road trip? Type it in the chat. Who said it? It's important to read all the speech bubbles in Diary of Olympic Kid books. Yep, I see right answers. His mom was the one that said it. Perfect. Turn the page. This isn't the first time mom has sprung a trip on us without any warning. Last year, on the first day of summer, she said we were going upstate for a few days to visit Aunt Loretta at the nursing home. It wasn't exactly my idea of a fun way to kick off summer. One time when we visited Aunt Loretta, her roommate grabbed me and wouldn't let me go until a staffer gave her a chocolate chip muffin. But mom said just bluffing about going to the but mom was just bluffing about going to the nursing home. At breakfast the next morning, she told us where we were really going. We're going to Disney World. Me and my brother Roderick were happy because we were both dreading spending the first week of summer playing shuffleboard at the nursing home. But when my little brother Manny heard about the change of plans, he totally lost it. Mom had talked up Aunt Loretta's trip so much, Manny was actually excited to go. So it's kind of backfiring. We ended up postponing our trip to Disney so we could visit Aunt Loretta. You'd 
think mom would have learned her lesson about surprise trips after that one. I don't know exactly where this trip idea came from because the new issue of Family Frolic magazine came in the mail today. Um, everyone, take five seconds. Mrs. Kneifel just got an email from Mrs. Jones. I should probably check it. Um, everyone, take five seconds. Let me invite someone that apparently was not invited. Anyways, personally, I think it'd be much more fun to go to Disney World than to um, go visit someone in a nursing home, personally. I mean, unless you really like that person, I guess. But still, Disney World's pretty fun. Oh, okay. Never mind. The person just joined. Hi, Mackenzie. Anyways... I know exactly where this road trip idea came from because the new issue of Family Frolic magazine came in the mail today. If I had to guess, I'd say 90% of everything we do as a family comes from ideas mom gets from that magazine. And when I saw the latest issue, I knew it was going to get mom's wheels turning. Obviously, it's not mom's. Mom doesn't have wheels. What is he talking about when he says mom was wheels turning? What are we talking about there? Type it in the chat. What wheels are turning? Her mind. Good job, Molly. Yep. Good job, Zach. Like her brain. Yep. All right. Here's a picture, right, of the Family Frolic magazine he's talking about. And it says, Adventure Awaits, the Ultimate Road Trip. I flipped through Family Frolic a few times. And I have to admit, the pictures always make everything look like a lot of fun. Our perfect family barbecue. Summer's here and it's time to break out the grill and fill coolers with drinks. What a better way to celebrate sunshine than a good old-fashioned barbecue. Follow our tips for a day you and your family won't soon forget. Turn the page. But there must be something wrong with our family because we never measure up to the ones they show in the magazine. I guess mom's not giving up though. She said this road trip is going to be awesome and that spending a lot of time together in the car will be a bonding experiment, experience for the whole family. I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a kid, I, had, I have two older brothers and being stuck in the car with them for a long time wasn't exactly bonding. It was kind of like a big old mess. So I don't know how you guys are with your siblings, but spending a long time in the car with anyone can be a lot. I tried to talk her into letting us do something normal, like going to a water park for the day, but mom didn't want to hear it. She said the whole point of this trip is to do things we've never done before and have, and to have an authentic experience. Authentic experience. I thought mom would have looped dad in about her road trip idea, but apparently I was wrong because when he got home from work, he seemed just as surprised as us kids. Dad told mom it was bad time to be away from work and he didn't want to use his vacation days unless he absolutely had to. But mom said there's nothing more important than spending time with your family. Then dad told mom he was really hoping to get his boat out on the water this weekend. And if we went on a road trip, he wouldn't be able to do that. Mom and dad getting along pretty well in mom and dad get along pretty well in general, but the one thing that's guaranteed to cause a fight between mom between them is dad's boat. A few years ago, mom sent dad out to get some milk, but along the way he spotted a boat for sale in someone's front yard, and before you knew it, the boat is in our driveway. Mom was mad that dad didn't check with her first because having a boat is a ton of work. But dad said it was always his dream to own a boat and that we could spend every weekend out on the water as a family. So dad got to keep the boat and he seemed really happy, but things went downhill fast. A few days later, some people from the homeowners association knocked on our door. They said there were rules in our neighborhood against having a boat parked in front of your house and told dad he had to move it to the back. The boat sat in the backyard for the whole summer because dad was too busy and didn't have time to use it. Then in the fall, one of dad's co-workers told them we had to winterize the boat to protect it from cold weather. 
Dad found out it would cost more to winterize the boat than it cost him to buy it. So he decided he'd take his chances. And sure enough, two weeks later, when the temperature dropped below freezing, a big crack appeared in the hall. So the hall is like the front of the boat. When it started to snow, Dad rolled the boat under the back deck and it sat there all winter. In the spring, Mom started using it to store all sorts of junk from the house. The next summer, Dad decided he was going to fix the boat. Okay. So I think one thing important to remember in Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, especially if you've never read it before, sometimes when we're talking about one thing, it hops to a story about something else. So it's really important that you pay attention to what's happening. Because remember, all we're talking about was a road trip so far. And now we're talking about the family's boat and how they got a boat. Mom didn't want a boat, but then dad kept the boat. Then the boat broke. And now dad wants to get the boat back out, but it's full of stuff. So you can see them like struggling to get the stuff out of the boat. So it's super important to follow along in these books. But when he pulled it out from under the deck, he discovered a family of raccoons living in our old washing machine. Dad called an exterminator to get rid of the raccoons, but he heard how much that was going to cost. He decided to take care of it himself. I can tell you, exterminators are very expensive. They're the people that get rid of like mice or like termites bugs things like that like it's their job to come to houses and businesses and check for bugs and animals and stuff and sometimes you just call them if you need them in general but then manny heard about the baby raccoons living in the washing machine and mom had to step in the boat's been sitting there ever since i haven't heard any scurrying sounds coming from under the deck for a while so i'm guessing the raccoons moved out Today, mom told dad he had the whole rest of the summer to get his boat out on the water, and he pretty much gave up after that. Mom said we were going to leave first thing in the morning, so we needed to start packing for the trip. She told everyone to bring the bare essentials so we could fit everything in the minivan. What does bare essentials mean? Can anyone explain that in my chat? If I say bear, bring your bare essentials on the trip, what does that mean? Explain it in my chat. In the chat, Zach. Bare essentials. Anyone know how to explain that? If not, it's okay. That's why we're here. All right, so we seem like we're kind of on the right track. Yeah, it's the most important things. The bare minute or the bare essentials is not very much. It's just exactly what you need. So if you're going on a three day trip, mom's thinking bare essentials. You need three outfits and your shoes and, you know, like shampoo and stuff. You don't need your winter coat, a then a spring jacket and a ball gown and like 14 bats and baseballs. She wants just what you need because they're, everything has to fit inside their minivan. So you can't bring every single thing you own. So bare essentials is most important. Exactly what you need. Not too much stuff. But by the time we got all of our stuff in the driveway, it was pretty clear we had a space problem. So looking at that picture, I mean, there's a tennis racket, a cooler, a beach ball, first aid, golf clubs, more tennis balls. Like, there looks like there's a lot of stuff. Mom started going through everything and sorting it into two piles and the things we needed and the things we didn't. Roger was pretty disappointed when some of his most, when some of his essentials didn't make the cut. Obviously, we're not going to be able to fit the drum set in the minivan. So that's not necessarily essential to a road trip. Mom made me leave a bunch of my small stuff behind, which seems pretty, ridic pretty ridiculous considering that Manny's plastic potty was coming along for the ride. Whenever we take a trip that's longer than 15 minutes, Mom brings Manny's potty just in case. But I get really uncomfortable whenever Manny uses it. Mom wouldn't let me and Roger take the, take any electronics on the trip, even though they barely take up any space. Okay, so there's a silly picture of Mr. Manny using the potty between Roderick and um, Greg. And no electronics. Uh-oh. So, you know, that's what kids love to use these days. Could you imagine if your mom, you had to go in the car and mom wouldn't let you bring your switch or your phone or your iPod or anything? Road trip, no electronics. <gasps> that might be boring car ride. You'd have to just read books. But sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I get car sick if I try to read while um, in the car. So that doesn't sound like a very fun car trip. Next page. She's always saying kids these days don't know how to socialize because they're constantly got their noses two inches from a screen. 
But I'll tell you this. When I have kids, I'm going to let them play with whatever kind of gadget they want. You ask me, electronics are a way to keep a family, to, are the key to family happiness. I don't have any kids. But I do think it's important to have family time. And I think sometimes, I mean, you don't have to agree with me, but I think sometimes it's okay to have electronics because, you know, sometimes we just need them. But then I also think it's important that sometimes you don't have them. Like, you know, maybe a family dinner, you don't have them and stuff because it's important to spend time with your family. But I do think that it's okay to have them. I just don't think it's okay to have them on 24-7. So feel free to agree or disagree. Even after mom went through every single item in the driveway and cut out all the things we didn't need, there was still way too much to fit in the van. I suggested we went, we rent one of those giant recreational vehicles because we could fit all of our stuff in it and have room to spare. A recreational vehicle also means like an RV. So I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys have seen them like a camper or an RV. So RVs, um, a camper is one that you like attached to a hitch to your car and an RV is one that you specifically like the driving it's like a bus it's you drive from the vehicle the way I see it if we if you want the whole family to get along everyone needs their own space and with one of those souped up RVs we could spend weeks on the road without even bumping into one another but mom said RVs are too expensive and they have terrible gas mileage so that put an end to that idea Roderick said maybe we could get one of those trailers you tow behind the car, which sounded smart to me. But it was pretty clear Roderick was imagining the trailer as some sort of mini apartment for himself, so that wasn't going to fly either. Then Dag rang in with his own idea. He said we could solve the whole space issue by just putting the stuff that didn't fit in the van into the boat, which we could tow behind us. I think mom realized that wasn't really another option, so she caved in. But getting the bow into the driveway was easier said than done. I'm sure we've all had an idea where you're like, oh, yeah, let's just do that. Then it ends up being a ton of work, even though you didn't necessarily want it to be a ton of work. Not only did we have to take all the junk out of the boat, but it turned out there was a tree growing through the bottom. It took three hours to get the boat out from under the deck. And let me just say, mom did not exactly go out of her way to help. After, And you can see mom and Manny are just playing and blowing bubbles and having a grand old time while the other three are trying to get this boat out. After we got the boat into the driveway, dad patched up the hole in the bottom and the crack in the hall with some duct tape. I just hope we're not going anywhere near water on this trip. Obviously, duct tape's probably not going to hold that well if they went in a lake with a boat. Because as far as I know, the boat didn't come with any life preservers. All right, now we are on Saturday. So Friday's over. We are moving to Saturday. Even with the added space we got from the boat, the minivan was still pretty full. I snuck my pillow on board at the last second because I decided I was entitled to at least one luxury item. Does anyone know what, like how you would it describe a luxury item? L-U-X-U-R-Y, luxury item. What does that kind of mean? So sometimes luxury items are super expensive. Um, Definitely, but I think in this case, a luxury item was like one nice thing, even though a pillow probably doesn't, like his pillow probably necessarily doesn't cost a lot, but it's something really nice for him in this situation. Like he's considering a luxury item, a pillow, just so he can actually have something to sleep on. But lots of times when we're thinking luxury items, we're thinking like things that cost a lot. Yeah. I figure Roderick would want to sit in the back of the van because whenever we go anywhere as a family, he likes to stretch out and take a nap. Every once in a while, he'll, we'll forget Roderick is even back there. This Easter, we made it halfway through church before Mom realized Roderick never made it out of the van. Back when we had a station wagon, me and Roderick used to sit in the back together in the seat that faced the rear window. But we got in big trouble when we played a practical joke on Mom and Dad and ended up getting, pulled, getting us pulled over by the police. So there's a picture and they're pretending like they're being kidnapped. Super dangerous. Don't ever do that unless you're actually in trouble. Just for the record. If you are ever kidnapped, please find a way to notify someone. But don't ever do that to your parents. That's very serious and the police will definitely get notified. 
When we get into the van today, Roderick offered me the back seat. Ooh, how odd. Roderick's offering him the back seat when he normally never would, which to me, I would feel really suspicious. I accepted before he could change his mind, but I should have known his offer was too good to be true. Before we pulled out of the driveway, oh wait, pause before I read that. Why was his offer too good to be true? Looking at that picture, why is this offer too good to be true? What, why did he offer him the back seat instead of the middle? Use the illustration to help you. Yeah, he has to sit with all this stuff. There's no room to stretch out at all. It's just full of, full of stuff. His brother looks like he's way more comfortable in the middle seat than he would have been in the back. So he got stuck in the back with all that stuff. Before we pulled out of the driveway, mom said we were taking a special guest along for the ride. For a second, I was worried we were picking someone else up because with all of our stuff in the van, they'd have to sit on the roof. But mom opened her purse and pulled out a piece of paper with a drawing on it. The drawing was Flat Stanley, a character from the book I read in second grade. Has anyone heard of Flat Stanley before? Anyone heard of that? Zach has. Anyone else? Ala or Olivia has. Landon has. Okay. Seems like most of you have. It's like this paper character that is in a book and then you send him places and you tell him like where he traveled and stuff. So apparently they're going to be bringing Flat Stanley along. How nice. Flat Stanley is a boy who gets squashed by the bulletin board then falls off his bedroom wall in the middle of the night. And when they pull the bulletin board off him, he is as thin as a piece of paper. I thought it was pretty cool that Flat Stanley could fold himself up and get mailed to his grandma's or have his brother fly him like a kite. But I'll tell you this, if Flat Stanley had a brother like Roderick, I guarantee he wouldn't survive a whole day. Oh, look, there's Roderick. He's thinking like, oh, he would shred Flat Stanley through a paper shredder. I really like the book, but it kind of freaked me out too. One thing it did was give me a deathly deathly fear of bulletin boards are you sure you don't want the bed there's lots more comfy that's okay you take it so that's obviously a silly fear bulletin boards in second grade everyone in my class had to color in a cut out of flat stanley and mail him to a friend or a relative who lived far away then that person was supposed to take a picture of flat stanley in front of something interesting and mail him back with the photo my friend Rowley sent Flat Stanley to a bunch of his relatives and got lots of cool pictures back. Rowley even sent him to his uncle who lives in Asia, and he took a picture of Flat Stanley in front of the Great, great Wall of China. Well, the first person mom sent my Flat Stanley to was her cousin Stacy, who lives in Seattle, but she probably wasn't the best choice. Stacy is one of those people who hoard all sorts of stuff like newspapers and magazines. So mom should have known that once her cousin got her hands on Flat Stanley, he wasn't coming back. Meh, not going to give Flat Stanley back. How sad. Today, mom said she was going to take photos of our new Flat Stanley in front of all the cool places we visit and make a scrapbook of our trip. As soon as we get on the highway, she starts snapping pictures, but she's probably a little too eager because her first few pictures weren't exactly keepers. Okay, so those pictures are obviously silly. Like, you know, a random road sign isn't a good thing for Flat Stanley. You'd want to buy, like, monuments or super cool things, not just a regular tree. We see trees all the time. Same with a cow. We see cows all the time. At least we do. So, you know, that wouldn't be an exciting thing for our Flat Stanleys to be taking a picture with. Um. All right, we are going to stop there today, but everyone stay on. Please. Mrs. Knifel forgot her watch today, and I'm real sad. Okay, so we got through 28 pages today. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do. I think tomorrow we are going to read a little bit more, and then I will have some questions for you over the first, um, like, Friday and Saturday. So we are going to have a live meet tomorrow. It just probably won't be the whole time. Uh, then you're going to have some questions that you have to read or have to um, answer for me, okay? But this was our first official 
read 28 pages. So tomorrow we will be having another live meet. This will be posted on Reading RTI. So in case you need to rewatch it or something, that's fine. If I, I would rather you not read ahead, just for the record. But if you choose to read ahead or you've already read part of this book or have read this book, make sure you're not spoiling anything for anyone else because that's not fair to everyone else that hasn't read it. Just my little disclaimer. So um, I hope you guys like the book so far. I think it'll be a really good read. Um, like I said, we will have a live meet tomorrow. Then you'll probably have some small amount of work. Everyone has finished our read works except for one person. And I don't think that person's live with us right now. Um, so you can go back on read works and see what your score was. Um, shout out to Gage and Avery and Zachary for getting 100% on your read works. Good job, you three. Everyone else, make sure you um, check out your ReadWorks and see how you did. We'll do a ReadWorks about every week, but I am going to stop recording and sign off. You guys should be now um, checking what score you got on your ReadWorks and see which ones are the right answers. I want you to check that over to make sure you know why you got things wrong. I left some comments on the short answer one, so that is what you are doing until your next class starts. Thanks, guys. This will be posted on Reading RTI. See you tomorrow.